Welcome back to my channel. My name is Kiana. If you're new here and I am the Art of Phenology, I am a fourth grade teacher teaching a lot of things and this week is conference week. Um, I'm feeling pretty good about teaching right now. So that said, I'm ready to vlog again. If you've seen my most recent vlogs, you know I've been having a really hard time in the school year. Um, but today I'm really, really tired but still in good spirits. Um, so I decided I was going to try to vlog throughout this week and share all the things with you guys. First, I'm going to share my outfit with you. Today is Teacher Jean Jacket Day. If you don't follow Lanisha at Apron with an Education over on Instagram, she has coined Teacher Jean Jacket Day because all of us teachers have a jean jacket. So this is mine today. I'm also wearing Halloween for almost all of the month of October. So I'll show you guys my earrings first so you guys can see my little skull earrings. I got these from Shein. And I have on my sugar skull skirt, which you guys can't see very well. Just um, a white little turtleneck sweater, sweater also from Shein. The skirt is from Amazon years ago, I think. And then the, the jean jacket is from Old Navy. I also have on, let's see if you guys can see, some little old booties from Target. But yeah, that is my teacher OOTD. But how is it going? I think this is the most... Um, confident I felt going into conferences usually I'm really nervous talking to parents but I think that how my homeroom has gone this year and how stress-free it has been teaching my homeroom I feel like it's gonna be pretty good to do conferences this year also uh, we are working on factors and multiples in my classroom this week and then we're gonna be ending the week with some patterns so I'll show you guys what we did for math today um, and then we, yeah, I'll just show you guys what we did for math. Okay, so here are my math lessons for this week. I found some Halloween digital paper on um, Etsy, so I've been using it in my classroom because I'm obsessed, clearly. It's my favorite holiday. And let's see if I can get this to click. So it's Monday. We started our day with some boom. Um, it's a skip counting and multiples game. I don't really... It's so hard to explain it. It's just kind of one of those games you have to just play for yourself. Uh, if I figure out a way to explain it, then I will. But let me think on that. But we played Boom as our activator. And this was our ICANN statement. Our learning target was that we could recognize multiples. So today was more of a focus on multiples. We focused on factors last week. And um, so what my students had to do was we looked at this word problem and I modeled for my students how to find multiples of four using this hundreds chart. So I colored in all the multiples of four and then they talked about the patterns that they noticed. Then I kind of went over some, I pointed out some patterns after giving the students a chance to figure out some patterns on their own. Then we defined what a multiple was, put, the kids put it in their journal, and then they glued their own hundreds chart and we worked together to solve this problem by finding multiples of three and then they completed this exit ticket so they had to look at this set of numbers and figure out if these were all multiples of four five six or seven and that was pretty much it for our mini lesson then i gave my students a formative and um, we also glued in i'll show you what we did actually um, for the independent work Okay, so I am a part of Brittany Hedges Mix and Math Academy, and so in the academy she gives us lots of different resources, and this one was what she gave us for prime and composite number, or sorry, for multiples. There's things for prime and composite as well. So there's different hundreds charts. There's actually six of them. Um, so my students like cut them in half and glued them in their journals. And then what they had to do for this one was find the multiples of two and color that in pink and then color the multiples of seven in orange. And then talk about the patterns they noticed with the twos, the patterns they noticed with the sevens, and then what common, um, multiples both of the factors shared so my kids are working on that to practice their factors and their multiples 
I've also been having a really hard time like finding the energy to make anchor charts. So I found these on Teachers Pay Teachers and they have everything I want because they show how to do the factor rainbows, but also make the factors with the T chart and um, talk about the prime and composite with models and then showing the multiples as well. And then also finding factors. These are just some helpful tips and tricks for the students to determine whether these numbers can be factors or not. So I added these to our wall, but you can see our wall is very naked because I purged all of the first quarter content. It's like for, except for this, I still have students finishing up some stuff from last quarter and that stuff's getting all laminated and then it'll be kind of archived. I'll put it on the board, but it'll be all stacked up so students can just flip through it to refer back to it later in the year. Today, my students also got their new class jobs. If I'm being completely honest, I have been dropping the ball with the class jobs because I just have been so busy. So my students got new seats. My homeroom students got new seats for the new quarter and they got their new jobs for the new quarter. Um, I also need to like replace all of the pencils in their pencil buckets because guys, there's just, it's just a hot mess going on in there. I don't know if I've shown you everything that's in their table buckets. Hopefully I remember to do that throughout the week. I'll make a little note for myself. Tomorrow we have a super fun day planned. Uh, it's going to be a very food themed day. I think I'm going to have to probably tell you guys about it tomorrow. But basically we're working on simple machines in science. So my students will be using different candy items to build simple machines. And then I decided to make a factors and multiples um, activity to go with it that was food related. So we're going to factor the rainbow with Skittles, like kiss the rainbow, but factor the rainbow and do some factoring and some multipling, multiplying, multiplying. That's weird that I don't know how to say that. With that, and it's gonna be a fun day. So I'll probably give you guys some more details, but I gotta go home and print out some pictures to set the theme. We're gonna be having like a kitchen theme in the classroom. I have my chef's hat pulled out, and then my little chef's outfit back here is ready to go. So it's gonna be a lot of fun, hopefully. But when my students don't know how to behave or control all of their energy during a room transformation I always keep a backup activity on deck because at the end of the day learning in this way is a privilege at the end of the day my job is just to teach so all of these things are things that are privileges and if students can't handle it which sometimes happens it's important that we have a backup lesson for them to do so for students that may not be able to handle it they're going to be um, still learning about simple machines but they're going to be completing some comprehension passages and questions hopefully none of my kids have to do that but i will have that prepared just in case because we always have to plan for the unexpected um but let me go ahead i think and get out of here it's getting really late so I wanted to vlog so much more today, but just with people in and out of the room and chatty and all of those things, it just didn't get to happen. But I will hopefully be able to vlog a little bit more tomorrow and share that with you guys. Hey guys, hey, happy Tuesday. Um, I'll go ahead and kick things off by showing you guys my outfit today. I love this t-shirt. It says, we'll trade my students for candy. I will not confirm or deny whether or not that's true, but it's a very cute Halloween shirt. I got it. I think two years ago, my first year in fifth grade, and I just love it. I love all my Halloween style. Uh, this sweater is from Get Your Teach On. I got to wear it during the Get Your Teach On photo shoot for their fall merch launch, and I just fell in love with it. It's so soft, so comfy, so I got it for myself. This skirt is from the Teacher Boutique Sharp RBC. It was gifted to me uh, last school year, and I'm just wearing some white vans, even though it's after Labor Day. No one really cares about that anymore, right? My students said that today was the best day ever, and it was not, like, not the best day ever for me. It was just incredibly exhausting. We did the Skittles activity, which I'm gonna just honestly show you guys more details, like, tomorrow. Tomorrow's a digital day. And hopefully I'll have a lot more energy. I say that now, but talking to parents during conferences takes so much out of you. So we'll see if I have the energy to share all of that tomorrow. But that is my hope, wish, and plan to be able to share all of those details and things like that with you guys. Oh, and then for science, the kids made simple machines. So my student teacher prepared these baggies and the baggies had... My props are showing. The baggies had Twizzlers, Lifesaver gummies, Oreos, Chips Ahoy, which most kids didn't use, orange wedge gummy candy, um, pretzels, and graham crackers. 
and they were able to come up with six different simple machines so the incline plane wedge screw pulley what am i forgetting do, 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 wheel and axle and the lever so i have some footage of that so i'll go ahead and show you guys some of those pictures and some of um like the videos from that because they had like the best time Yes, as you can see, we had a very fun day. The kids also had little cute chef hats that they were able to wear um, that my student teacher bought for them. We covered the tables, and guys, surprisingly, there was like no mess on the floor, so thank God. Um, I'll show you like some of the props that we brought in and then my little chef hat that I wore for that as well. Yeah, so my student teacher just prepared like some little baggies for the kids. So every kid had their own baggie. They only touched their own materials. There was no sharing or anything like that. We did have the tables covered, but they are not covered now. But you can see that this like little utensil holder, this is from my house. And these are just some utensils that I ordered that were supposed to be black, like everything else that I love, black and white, but they came brown. So I was like, these will be the perfect prop for school. Uh, these are some mixing bowls and wooden spoons wooden spoons from my house the mixing bowls are zebra because they're from college don't judge and yeah oh and this is my don't ignore my teacher table but this is my chef's hat i used this for my fraction pizzeria but i pulled it out today i did not actually wear the chef outfit today though because I just wasn't feeling it and my shirt was candy themed and the whole day was candy themed so it all worked out i also got my anchor charts back so these are all laminated this is everything from the first quarter of the school year so i'm going to be hanging these on the wall tomorrow um, so students can refer back to it throughout the school year and then i also printed out these like mini anchor charts i do like to make my own anchor charts for small groups so like mini anchor charts that we can refer back to that I can pull right at my small group table because this is in the back of the class and my table is here. But for the sake of time, I already make these aligned to the standard with the class. So I printed out these like other ones from Teachers Pay Teachers. And I think I'm just going to put these on a book ring and have them. I went ahead and labeled them with the standard and I'm going to just have these there to reference so these will be like for intervention groups because these are all the standards that we've already taught but then I also will have um, like new anchor charts for me to use when I'm pulling small groups so we can refer back to that I have the current ones in my small group station for today so that's why you guys don't see anything about multiples and factors because that's with all of my other small group materials for today Luckily, no one had to use the alternative assignment today um, the day was a bit wild but it wasn't out of control wild crazy um, my afternoons are definitely a lot more active than my mornings but even still everything was within the realm and we only got a little bit of pretzels in the carpet so that worked out pretty well i can't believe this but i am about to leave my teacher table like this y'all i'm just too tired and most of the conferences are on zoom oh so let's kind of talk about conferences i haven't shared like what i prepared for conferences hopefully i'll be able to share that tomorrow but all of our conferences are supposed to be on Zoom, and I teach two blocks. Um, I teach my homeroom and then another block, and most of all, actually, we've been encouraged to have our conferences in, on Zoom, and that's just a lot easier for me. I think that's also easier for parents because they don't have to come in. A lot of the conferences are really quick and easy, so that's just a lot of hassle for like a five to ten minute conversation. Um, so we're doing zoom conferences so that's also i think why i don't have much urgency in getting my table cleared off um and i'm only doing it with my homeroom just because i think my principal knows that like we are human and there's just no way we could meet with 60 parents in one or in two days of conferencing or even in a week's time that just seems impossible um, so we're just meeting with our homeroom and then I guess if there's like special requests we can make those happen as well um, but not too many of those so I do feel like conferences are going to be pretty easy breezy this school year and I'm really happy for it so I will come in tomorrow before my first zoom conference at 8 30 and kind of clear that off but I have also made like a to-do list for myself to do because I do feel like the conferences are going to be pretty short and my morning is pretty spaced out my afternoon is packed um so let me show you what's on my to-do list and then i think i'm gonna head out like i want to talk to you guys about science and i want to talk to you guys about 
the Skittles activity and everything, but I'm just really tired. But I did get to start some lesson plans for next week, and that means I'm moving back in the right direction, but let me show you guys. All right, so this is what's on my to-do list for tomorrow. Students need new pencils. I think I talked about that yesterday. Submitting some scratch paper, preparing my centers and small groups for next week, filing all the papers from the first quarter, like just all the random extra copies that you have and master copies of everything that just becomes a big pile of junk. Um, giving feedback in student journals, um, planning my small groups for next week, mapping out who else I want to see for the remainder of this week, and then grading their formative to plan or to form my small groups for next week. So that is what we are doing. But yeah, that's all I got for you guys today. Like we've done so much more and I could go into so much further detail, but teacher tired. Hopefully tomorrow I'll have a lot more energy to share with you guys. Tomorrow's all digital and then Thursday's early release and then I'll do conferences Thursday after like noon-ish and then Friday's a full day and then this week's over. So um, I do have so much to share with you guys this week. I'm finally getting my toes back into who I used to be as a teacher and that's exciting um, and that makes me excited to share things as well. Now I just got to get that energy piece back up so that everything will be is it focusing? I don't know if you guys can see my face or not. I really don't know if it's focusing, but I'm just trying to have a great um, remainder of the semester. So I'm hoping that second quarter is better than the first, and I think it starts with this. So yeah, you guys have a great evening. I'm already after my cutoff time for the day, but bye. Hey guys, it is Thursday, October 21st, and it is our last day of parent-teacher conferences. I didn't really have time to record yesterday, um, but parent-teacher conferences have been like next level easy uh, this school year compared to years past. So this year we are still doing Zoom conferences and I think it's just the best. I hope it lasts forever. But yesterday the students had a digital learning day. Like it was a half day. It was still early release, but it was early release digital. So they were not at school. So we had the whole day to conduct conferences except for like a two hour period in the middle where we had like staff lunch and like just came together as a staff. Um, so I was able to do so many conferences. I think I had like 15 or 16 conferences yesterday and they were just so seamless. Um, and it was just so, so nice. And then today was an early release day in person. So I taught only my afternoon block um, today in person. And then I had my homeroom for like 30 extra minutes. So we just reviewed for our, st our science test tomorrow and now I'm about to have only five more conferences and I have a couple gaps in between. So it should be a really easy day. Um, the parents in my homeroom have been so kind, so appreciative, and so understanding of everything. Just appreciating me taking the time to get to know their students or their child and um, everything that we do understanding that we're going through a hard time right now and just really being reasonable and understanding and it's just been like a breath of fresh air if I'm being completely honest because that hasn't been my experience all school year but my homeroom is really awesome. I have no doubts that the next five will go pretty well as well. I did have a to-do list and I thought that because Yesterday was like a teacher work day. I was going to be able to do a lot of work and still confer with parents, but that just didn't happen. So it was just a hot, hot mess, like to do list wise. Like the conferences went well, super busy. You f at times feel like a broken record. Like your child's amazing. They're doing so well. Your child's amazing. They're doing so well. Um, but it is nice to like talk to parents and just kind of see like where some of the kids get their little like quirks and things from. It's so cool to watch that. But we were provided lunch yesterday at school and we were provided lunch today so I had a pimento cheese sandwich. Um, our PTA I think off got us these lunches so we're really fortunate in that regard. I'm really really tired but we're still here and we're just going for it. Halloween update. I didn't really do too much Halloween outfits yesterday because of conferences and I don't want people to think I'm crazy. I did have one in parent conference yesterday and well even the, virtually the kids were the parents were like yeah so and so has told me that you're obsessed with Halloween and I'm like yeah I am but I don't want to seem like that crazy obsessed person and that mom that came in person uh, saw my nails and she was like oh I see you have Halloween nails and I was like yeah I'm a little obsessed and she was like yeah my daughter told me but today I kept it really subdued so the only Halloween thing I really have are my little um oops are my 
little jack-o'-lantern earrings and then I have this new lanyard from Teacher Joys and it's kind of Halloween-y the pumpkin is but it's also fall color so I think I'm gonna just wear this through the duration of this fall season before December um oh through until we get to December and then I'll find something more winter themed or holiday themed we'll see when we, we'll get to that point so really quickly i'll just share like what i share with parents at conferences the conferences have been really simple and easy i usually start with something good um you know the sandwich method something good get to the meat and then something good to end it so i just start with like the qualities or like personality traits that i really admire i love about each student and then i kind of go into the grades um and just give like a grade overview of how the students are doing they got their progress reports over the weekend so a lot of the parents already know their grades but just a quick review and then open the floor for any questions about any particular grades because we're departmentalized though I'm only responsible for math, science, and social studies, so the questions about reading and writing and spelling and things like that, I can only answer to an extent, and the same goes for my partner. So because of that, another teammate of mine created this little form for us, and so this is what I gave to my partner so that she had all of this information if, student had, if parents had any questions about math, science, or social studies. So basically it has their current math, science, and social studies grade, and then we take um, assessments, like county assessments. So it has a raw score and a converted score. So I put both of those there. And then in this space, I just kind of wrote like behavioral notes that I for things that I've noticed, things that I like, you know, just the regular teacher things. And then it also has an area for us to check off things, math skills that need to be um, improved upon or things that I noticed are areas of growth throughout the school year. So these are all the units that we've had so far. So I just checked those off and then also talked about, I wrote down like where they could find those resources or what resources to suggest to those parents. So this is what my partner teacher had for um, math and she kind of has something similar with reading and writing that I'm able to share with parents and then if parents had additional questions about the opposite subject they could email that parent. So then we just kind of talk about those things and then I open the floor again to parents, uh, quickly talk about behavior. I really don't have behavior problems in my homeroom. I'm so fortunate. That's it. Like I swear these conferences have been averaging at about seven minutes unless parents have questions which is totally fine because sometimes i don't i feel like it's like not like i'm not utilizing our time together as much as possible when they don't have questions because it's just so quick like oh here's some information and they're like okay cool um but when they're able to ask questions i feel like when i get to like know the parents a little bit more we get to have more discussion um and different things like that but i do appreciate the efficiency of all of the conferences as well so it's nice to have that that balance but the conferences again have been really easy i feel like at my old school we did so much more paperwork like title one documents and all other sorts of things the conferences were pushing 20 minutes every conference um and these are just really easy breezy and the parents are also really appreciative of them being on zoom being able to still be at work or still be able to stay at the house with the other kids it's just been really easy for i think all parties involved so um, this is the best i've ever felt about parent teacher conferences it usually causes me a lot of anxiety but these are great they join these are yeah i like it lastly for conferences um because i was able to get a lot of conferences done yesterday today is an early release day and typically i would like start scheduling conferences like as soon as the kids leave until like five or six in the afternoon but i was able to cushion myself because like it's so hard like on those early release days to get them on the bus with a funky dismissal feed yourself and use the restroom before that first parent comes and then you're like busy back to back so i didn't even start my conferences until two o'clock today and i'll be done by 4 p.m today so it gave me some wiggle room to just kind of breathe and ease into the afternoon and um yeah so now i have about 25 more minutes until my conferences begin and like i said i have a couple periods in between so i'm going to try to just kind of tidy up around here and get ready for tomorrow i also wanted to show you guys a quick preview of what i had the students do for the digital learning day um yesterday and then the students that were in person did today um, with me so we're, we reviewed simple machines by watching this video about simple machines and then the students completed this matching activity 
and they answered just like a 10 question quiz. They said it was really easy. So just like different questions to review force and motion and then also the simple machines. And then we reviewed our study guide. And so one of my teammates made this and then we just uh, did a quizzes. The kids did so well on it. And then for math, I used a lesson from the Nearpod library and we are starting the math standard, the common core standard for OA5, which is analyzing patterns and understanding shape patterns, number patterns, using input output table, all sorts of things. So this is the lesson that we did today. And they had to first make their own pattern just to kind of, this was like their activator. And then we talked about understanding how we can apply numbers to shapes for patterns. So they had to pick three of these shapes and draw it themselves and then create a pattern. And then we had to figure out what the 12th shape was. And then they had to draw what they thought the 16th step was without drawing 16 shapes. So we talked about how we could, this was the third shape and we could skip count by threes. And once we got to 15, we would know that one more than 15 would be the first shape of the second, of the next sequence. So that would be the circle. And then they talked about a growing pattern. So this was kind of like their activator for a growing pattern. And then we went on a virtual field trip to Egypt and the kids looked at a pyramid to see that a pyramid is an example of a growing pattern. It starts small and then gets bigger over time. And then we made those connections to a growing pattern and then the kids had to draw their own uh, growing pattern with blocks and they had to watch this video. I'll show you a quick snippet so you can kind of just see like one and then two rows, three rows and they had to do the fifth row and draw that and that was it for math today. While I have been in between conferences, I went ahead and did my flat lay of a product that I'm going to be putting in my TPT store for factors and multiples. Uh, this is the back side and this is the front side. So this is what I did with my students a couple of days ago that I told you guys I would share a little bit more about, which I still plan to. But basically the students are given just a scoop of Skittles, um, not really a set amount. And then they arrange them in arrays to help them make their factor rainbow, list the factors and tell if it's composite, then find all of the color totals and list those factors to tell if it's prime or composite. And then on the back side, again, they use the color totals to then find the first 10 multiples of each of these uh, factors. And then they just answer a few questions to interpret the information. So I just took, made a flat lay and took some pictures of that. And I will probably do like a little video to preview this before my next conference. I just had another like super quick conference. It was only maybe three minutes. The dad's a teacher, so he totally understood and the child's great, so um, another short one. So I'm looking for a fall door. So you guys saw that I did the Hispanic Heritage door and Halloween is next week and I'm not really wanting to do a whole Halloween door just to have to take it down in a week. So I'm gonna try to do a fall themed door, maybe a gratitude, grateful door, but I like to do math themed doors. So I'm gonna honestly look for one that's already made on TPT so that I don't have to get too, too creative. And that'll be up until the holidays just like this lanyard will last just as long i've been really bad about changing my litter board so i made this a class job i saw someone do this on instagram so the students were really excited to have this job and i was really excited to let it go because they always ask me why i don't use this so this is what that student came up with this time around last conference is done and i'm out of here it's 3 45 these all of my conferences today were like average three minutes with one being like 11. I'm out of here to go home and do more work at home. My classroom's a mess but I'm ready to go and it's only 3 45 so this is literally the earliest I've left all year. <laughs> hey hey it's another Saturday in the building. Um, Fridays are just so busy that it's so hard for me to vlog and if I can finish up on a Saturday I probably will. So I'm back at school today in my very loungy clothes. 
Um, I'm actually doing a district PD right now, and um, I came to the building because it's one of those Zoom PDs, and I must say that I'm here to get what I need, but also get things done. So I'm going to be multitasking to the max, have my camera on and off when it's appropriate, and right now I'm about to actually use some formative data that we did on Friday to make small groups for the coming week for my OA5, for OA5 patterns um, standard. So I can just make sure my groups are like hitting each of their needs based off of what they don't know. Um, and that's what they're talking about here. It's just using formative to make small groups. Uh, I definitely don't think I know everything, but I do feel like I have a good understanding of that. So I'm just kind of here to see if there's any new updates that I need to know or new tricks that I need to try or anything like that. Um, but I have a long to-do list, so this is from 9 to 12. This is three hours long, and then after that, I'm probably still going to be here a couple hours more just to do things. And most of those things aren't grading, so that's really nice. And conferences are out of the way, so that's also really nice. It's just trying to not feel overwhelmed like I did all of the first quarter, so making sure everything's meaningful, um, procedures are in place, or reestablishing those procedures that kind of got lost when I got overwhelmed, and it was just kind of hard to keep up, so that's where I am and that's what I'm doing so about to go ahead and do those small groups and listen in on this right now here is my small group binder you can see it's kind of bursting at the seams right now I wanted one of the flex binders because it allows me to like flip it backwards and take my notes but I have um, different sample problems for each AKS the colors are like different skills that match or I said AKS that is my district I have different um, color problems that match each standard and these are just uh, different skills that they need for the standard. So this is what we have for my small groups. Um, most recently for the input output tables. Actually, I was supposed to change that. That is not what the standard is. It's OA5, I believe. Um, but yeah, I have things for like my division small groups and my multiplicative comparison small groups and all sorts of other things like that. This is my small group planner. One day I'll do a whole video about how I do small groups um, because you may want to see that. But what my goal is, you see they're just kind of bursting at the seams right now. I also have little anchor charts that I keep in here. So when I need to like pull students, I have something to refer to back at the table. But um, I am going to have all of my materials in these folders. And these little plastic folders can be clipped into these binder rings. And then I can just label it like Division OA6, I mean, excuse me, MBT6, Multiplicative Comparison, um, OA1, or whatever, and have all of these just in my folder. Because I'm doing so much reteaching this from first quarter, I pretty much needed like one of these for all of the first quarter standards for my intervention groups in the mornings and then during dismissal when I'm having to reteach and things like that. I also have like a blank check, not checkbook, a blank grade book printed out. I would show you the front side, but there's student names. It's empty though, like there's no grades. You can kind of see it's just empty blanks. So what I do with it is I take these questions. There are like, um, there are four questions here and I just go off of how they did. So like number one is a certain skill that we're trying to see. And the, number two is a different one. Number three is about input output tables. Number four is about identifying the rules. So then I check those off. So if they couldn't get number one, I'm going to pull all the students that couldn't get number one. Not necessarily work on this because I want this to then be a post check after my small groups, um, but give them problems similar to that to work on that skill. And then if they're not good with input output tables, then I'm pulling an input output table group. If they're not good with identifying the rule, I'm grabbing a group that's not strong with identifying the rule based off of what they got correct or what they didn't correct, get correct on this pre-check then they're going to get this formative back and hopefully we can see some growth and if I don't then I know that I need to pull them again for intervention a little bit later. feel really accomplished. I have all of my small groups planned out. I don't really have a ton of small groups this week to plan because Monday and Tuesday are going to be the bulk of my small group days. Wednesday we're doing review. Thursday we're assessing. Friday is keep the kids calm or 
like maintain the crazy because it's the day before Halloween. Um, we're actually doing a really cool room transformation Friday. We're going to do fear factor. So no small groups that day as well. Um, but what I've done is, um, I have them, I think I told you it's like color coded based off of skills. So this is my extension group in problems. They're going to be working on two part input output tables or two part rules, two operation rules. I feel like I'm not explaining that well. And then this is going to be like my base group, just understanding how to use the input output table and different things like that. This group's just working on identifying the pattern. And then this group is working on the start with blank, where to go from there. So I color coded it. My district is so amazing for providing resources. I just apply the colors based off of what I know my kids need. And then that helps me when I'm like, because you guys know planning small groups is crazy and teaching is crazy so I'm like oh purple group just grab it because I know that's what I need I don't do the same groups every day I do it based off of their data and off of their needs so it's not like purple groups gonna see me one time throughout the week and blah 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 um, I just know if I'm pulling an extension group purple is the color I need if I'm pulling a group that needs help with the first five patterns I know I need to pull the blue um, but the kids aren't really like assigned a color or anything when I am I'll do a whole session on this another time um, because there's a lot that goes into planning small groups and effective math workshop. But yeah, I almost went on a rant. Glad I stopped it. <laughs> All right, so session's over. I have my small groups done, but I needed to plan like my must do's and may do's for the week. So I put those on the board. Uh, my maydews are just going to be finishing up things from this crazy conference week. And then my must do's, um, I'm not sure, I'm sure actually everyone has heard of Common Core Sheets. It's a free website where you can get a lot of free um, just like drills and practice sheets for different standards. And I took two different Common Core Sheets and it's a lot of problems. Like typically like one sheet could take forever. So what I do is I just to do like a half sheet thing where I put two common core sheets together like so and one day they'll do the top half the other day they'll do the bottom half just so they're getting that practice but it's not taking them so long that they're not able to do other things during their independent work time that I need them to do so I'll just I'm gonna go make some copies of that and then I have all of that done I emailed parents about some extra supports that they asked for during conferences and now I'm going to I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to make copies and I'll see what comes next. It's been lots of time later. All of my things should be ready for next week. I think everything I need is ready for next week. So the only thing that's not ready is just this mess of a table and my mess of a stage. So I plan to go ahead and clear that out before I leave and I'm hoping to leave in like 25 minutes. Hopefully I can get out of here in 25 minutes. That's the goal. So I'm gonna clean and then hopefully that'll be a wrap to this week. like standing desk area and most of the stage which can only mean that I'm finally about to head out of here so that is a wrap on this week I can say that this week was probably one of the better weeks I've had all school year even with everything going on um, I've learned how to manage the people that stress me and I just I don't know I have been like like super busy still but work-wise, like, I don't feel, like, 
I can't do this anymore. So that's really big progress. And I'm just hoping that it continues to go on this path. Um, so my closing thoughts would just be that if you have triggers in your life that are making you not enjoy the things that you want to do, cut those out. Whether that be blocking, not responding, um, or just keeping at bay and limiting contact. Like all of those little things that could trigger you. Just block them out. That's my my parting my parting thoughts for this video. And I'm looking forward to next week. It's going to be such a fun week. Halloween is my favorite holiday. So I just know we're going to have the best, best week. Um, I may vlog it or I may only vlog Friday. I haven't really decided yet, but I'm really excited. I hope you guys have a great week, weekend, whenever you see this. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.